Hello everyone, this is Karthik Silvaraj and in this video 21 of Mule USB tutorials we will be seeing about one of the scope components called Async. So before I go into the flow let me explain a use case. So there might be a flow in which you might need to do the auditing or some kind of archival or some kind of activity that is not actually priority but it is like an add-on which could add value to your uh, flow. So in such circumstances, if you don't want your processing to be dependent on all other factors like auditing or archival, you can build the flows in a async scope so that if there is going to be any failure in that particular part, your actual processing doesn't get missed out or it goes smoothly, whatever it is. So that is how you should use an async flow or if you think that the process um, which you do is going to be a time consuming one, um, you can just move it around into an async scope. So in this example, <coughs> I have a flow. So, so let me explain this. So we have an uh, HTTP input. So we will be providing an XML input to this through I mean the call would be an XML file so the ultimate aim of this flow or the actual output that is required by the user is to get the employee let me explain with the sample file so this is the employee detail file which has the company's uh, employee details employee number his name and everything so in here I have only two employee details so the ultimate uh, uh, aim when this let's assume that there is a service build for the user to get the employee IDs as a separate uh, only the employee numbers as a separate example. So that is the ultimate goal of this web service. But uh, there comes an extra requirement by some other IT team. So they need the uh, input that has been used by the user in XML format and there is another team which requires the same input in uh, JSON format so so we uh, but this is not necessarily required for the processing to show the users with only the employee IDs so for the con for the conversion transformation of the XMLs to extract only the employee numbers I have used an XSLT so which is called employee transform so i'll open that employee transform xsl also so if you see it travels for each company employee it gets you the employee number and it wraps around uh, an xm with an xml tag emp no details so for each company employee so you will get the output as the employee number with one and two alone for this example so this is the main objective for the user to get the employee numbers alone. But all these uh, requirements to get the input file in XML and JSON or uh, other requirements which should not hinder the response to this. So we have got it as a separate async flow like this. Okay. <coughs> so what are the input that we are getting? We are converting it to string. And then we are setting a session variable to capture the whole payload payload and the name of that session variables payload file then we have got a logger which will log you the payload in the console then we have the first async component which is a logger component which will say the async flow started for xml output next we have a set payload which will set the payload to the our session variable in which we have loaded the payload and it will route it to a output folder called output slash xml so let me show you that folder as well so let me clear the files first so so we have uh, two folders xml output xml and uh, output json okay so this will output to output xml and uh, again it will show you an uh, message async flow completed for xml output similarly we have a 
flow for similarly we have flow for json as well async flow started for json output we set the payload and we convert the payload from xml to json and we place it to a folder called output slash json and we also provide a message the async flow completed for json output so this is how the flow works now let me trigger the request so what the i'm going to use the same employee file that i showed you so i'll clear this uh, this is going to be my output i have used it previously so the same is remaining over here or uh, let me change the input to 3 the employee number as 4 okay now let me post it you can see that it has switched the employee number as 3 and 4 and if you go to the console so it has printed the payload and you have got the async flow for uh, json and xml started as well and you can see the files over here in json and the files in xml format here as well so suppose uh, le let me uh, change this uh, json output to a different folder which doesn't exist and see how i will rename the folder to json1 now let's see how this flow behaves and similarly here i will change the employee details to 6 5 and 6 okay so it has been deployed so now let me post the message so you can see that we have got the employee uh, details 5 and 6 here as well we due to uh, th there was an error in the processing of the flow as it couldn't find this output json flow but this didn't hinder our processing of getting the employee numbers so this is how async flow works so now let's see what will be the effect if we don't have this async scope at all let us uh, unwrap this scope so i'll delete this whole thing and uh, let's assume that i'll go to okay i will go over here and i will get this async wrapper out so let me go to the flow so now it is in the same flow okay and in this input we have provided a, a wrong uh, folder name so now let's see how it behaves so the application has been deployed successfully now uh, for your convenience let me change it to 7 and 8 now if i trigger it you can see that uh, as the output folder is not available we are getting an error over here which we were not able to see when the scope was uh, async and the piece in which the file is being transferred as a json message to an ftp location was done as a separate scope in an async scope we were not able to see this so this is how you use an um, async scope so thanks for watching this video. I will see you with uh, a different component in my next video. Bye.